Today we're going to talk about erosion. Erosion is the wearing away and movement of soil and rock from one place on the Earth's surface to another. Erosion is typically caused by gravity, water, wind, and ice. When it rains hard or rains for long periods of time, excess water runs off the land, which causes smaller streams to fill up. These smaller streams empty into medium streams, which begin to flow very quickly. As medium streams empty into creeks, the water gains a lot of energy and power, which can lead to serious stream erosion. So here we have a small stream in the woods. This stream barely has any water in it right now, but it travels down a fairly steep slope and because of that when it rains hard and there is a lot of water in this stream it causes a lot of erosion. Where I'm standing was once connected over to that side of the stream but over the years over a long period of time this stream has slowly cut down and eroded away all of the soil and rock and taking that material downstream to the stream at the bottom of the hill that it empties into. Eventually, this stream wants to get at the same level as that stream down there. There's probably about, I don't know, a 10 foot difference between where I'm standing and where the bigger stream is down the hill. This stream will continue to cut down until it gets to the same level. As we look around, we notice there's a lot of tree roots in the stream banks here. You can see tree roots all over the place from these large pine trees that are behind some of these other trees. It's a good thing those roots are here because they hold the soil in place. If they weren't here, this erosion would be even more significant than it is. So while this stream demonstrates erosion on a somewhat smaller scale, there are places on the earth where water has carved deep into the earth's crust. The Grand Canyon is a perfect example. The Colorado River in the bottom of the canyon is what made it. Millions of years ago, the Colorado River was on top of the Grand Canyon and it has cut down through the rock, through the soil, over millions of years. As water makes its way around a curve in the stream, the energy goes to the outside of the curve. And as it makes its way around, it has a lot of additional power to erode away the sides of the stream. Over time, this erosion can cause what's called an undercut bank, where the side of the stream is compromised. And that can lead to what we call a bank failure a place where the bank collapses and large amounts of rock and soil wash down into the stream. Bank failures like this are a problem in the Ashokan watershed because the soil contains a lot of clay minerals. And as we know, clay minerals are tiny particles that make their way into the stream. During times of high flow, those clay minerals get picked up by the stream and they make the stream look cloudy or dirty, almost like chocolate milk. That's a condition called turbidity. And it's actually one of the main stream health issues in relation to New York City's drinking water supply. As the stream makes its way around this curve or meander bend, the energy from the stream goes to the outside of the curve. You see here that the bank is made up of a lot of stream cobble, rocks, 
and even small boulders. And that's very helpful in preventing erosion. If we study the stream bank, we can look up and notice evidence of past high flows. And we see some debris up in the bushes. That was put there by floodwaters not too long ago. That debris probably sits about 8 or 10 feet up from the current water level. So another important thing to remember about streams is that they're dynamic, which means they're constantly changing. What we see today is a nice peaceful mountain stream could easily turn into a rushing torrent of water during times of high rainfall, intense storms. And when that happens, the stream has a lot of erosive force, the ability to wear away at the soil and rock. Stacked rock wall structures such as this one are often installed along the sides of streams in an effort to cut down on the amount of erosion that happens during times of high flow. But over time, even huge walls of rock like this will get undercut and will get washed away. So it's not always a uh, permanent solution to the problem of erosion. Here we see giant boulders of limestone that were part of a flood control project that was put in upstream shortly after Hurricane Irene. Since then, this stream has had some major floods, which has caused even these huge boulders to be washed out of the wall and carried downstream. It's amazing how powerful water can be. Stream banks are best protected when they are naturally forested. This creates a buffer or zone between the water and the sides of the stream. Notice how the roots of the trees are intermingled. This helps them hold the soil in place and prevent erosion during floods. To help solve the problem of erosion, numerous stream restoration projects have been completed in our watershed with the goal of reducing the amount of sediment getting into the stream. Here we see a stream restoration project from a few years ago. The hill slope has been completely restored so that no sediment can erode out and make its way into the stream. So here in the Ashokan watershed, it's really important that we try to cut down on stream bank erosion so as to protect the quality of the water. This water eventually will make its way to New York City and be used as drinking water for millions of people. You're awesome. Okay. Struggling actor. <laughs> yes. And now it's time for summer vacation. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs>